oh my gosh, I didn't see you there. I've been on the longest spring break of my entire life. It's so good to see you guys. My name is Miss Smith and I'm going to be your art teacher this year. Now, I know you might be thinking, um, how do you do art when your teacher isn't right there? Well, you can do it because I am right here. I'm right here. And I'm a little crazy. I wanted to start by sharing a little bit about myself. So bear with me as I am still navigating technology and I am definitely not a YouTube sensation. So I'm just trying to do my best, but here we go. All right. Now this is usually when I would ask, oh, I hope you can see my screen. So I sure hope you guys can see my screen. Um, so all about me. My name is Miss Smith and I have been teaching art. This will now be my 10th year at Marlette Elementary and I feel so fortunate to be at such a great school and now have the opportunity to teach all of these kiddos in our districts remotely. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining this journey with me. I have two degrees from Kansas State University. So I got my bachelor's in 2011 in art education. And then in 2019, I graduated with my master's in curriculum and instruction with an emphasis in art. Those two lovely humans standing next to me in this picture are my mom and my dad. Both of my parents live in Kansas City still, which is where I'm from originally. But now I consider myself a townie because I've been here so long. So if somebody asked, I would definitely say I'm from Manhattan. Here's my whole family. So if you can hopefully see my cursor, this is my brother Jeff and his beautiful fiance Angelina. And then you saw my parents. And then this is my other brother Tim and not pictured is his brand new wonderful fiance Sammy. And then this is my lovely boyfriend of 12 years, Jared. And then my family, well, my fur family, I should say, are these three wonderful little puppers. So we have Suko and Nova and Kinsley. And then I do have a cat, but she's always hard to get in the picture because they can't all be cute at the same time. And her name is Lucy. In my free time, I teach dance. I have been dancing since I was two years old. And so I have now been at Washington Dance Studio for the past seven years. No, eight years. And I teach everything from tap, jazz, lyrical, um, to my favorite genre, which is hip hop. So you can see a student and I doing some pretty cool freezes. And then one last thing about me is that I really, really love plants. I love the environment. I, in our district, am in charge of some environmental clubs and I started green teams and this whole movement. And so taking care of our environment, conserving it and being passionate about it are all things that are really important to me. And then this is me dressed up as Frida. I don't usually rock that beautiful unibrow, but Finally, I wanted to conclude with, I love art so much. I love teaching. I love kids. It is really difficult to not be able to squeeze every single one of you on the other side of the screen. So just know that I'm giving you all the air hugs that I can muster. And anytime you need one, just imagine that I'm right there next to you giving you one. So that's just a quick intro about me. And for our first week in art, we're not going to do anything wild and crazy. We are just gonna start with a book and get your minds thinking about art. One of my favorite things to do is to read to children. And I think my heart has been missing that the most. So that's what I wanna start with you today. We're gonna start with this book. It is called Art Supplies and it is by Chris Tugas. Chris did both the illustrations, so all of the pictures that are in this book and he wrote all of the wonderful words. Parents, if you are sitting by, I hope you enjoy. I love to do some good voices, so this is for your entertainment as well. As we read through this book today, I want you to be thinking about, do you have any of these art supplies at your house? Have you used these art supplies before? Which one might be your favorite and why? 
we have our title page here, Art Supplies, by Chris Dugas. And it's not my fault, Art declared. My supplies have a mind of their own. The paper started it by inviting everyone to her pad for a party. Things got crazy fast. Party at my pad, BYOS, bring your own supplies. The pencils led the way. The eraser almost stopped the party, but decided not to cross that line. Coming to this party was a great idea. You've sure got a sharp mind. Oh, thanks. You're rubbing me the wrong way, pal. To be or not to be, that is the question. He may be smooth, but I can draw circles around this guy. Have you ever used a pencil before? I hope so. Next, the crayons rolled in with some fun ideas. Those guys sure know how to think outside the box. Art's the best. Hey, everybody. Let's color outside the lines. You read my mind. You guys are crazy. I feel so inspired. Have you used crayons before? I really like crayons. The markers all agreed that they felt great. You feeling okay? Better now, thanks. Wow, this marker is magic. Ta-da! I've been dry for quite a while now and it feels great. Good for you, I like you better this way. Ah, ooh, ooh. Have you used markers before? Then the pastels arrived. They blended in smoothly. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange? Orange who? Orangey glad to be making art. He's on a roll now. This kid is smooth. Yeah, I like his style. Wow, he sure got a great touch. So pastels exist in two different kinds. We have chalk pastels. If you've ever drawn outside on your sidewalk with chalk, that's basically a chalk pastel. I don't know if you know this, but you can actually draw on paper with chalk. It's a little bit messy, but isn't all art. And then the other kind of pastels are oil pastels. And oil pastels feel kind of sticky and like a really, really dense crayon. And they're really fun because when you work with these materials together, you can blend them, you can manipulate them, and that's what Art is doing right here with his supplies. Ink arrived with a splash and left a lasting impression. Anybody want to take a dip? I do, I do too. After you, Slim. Ink is like what's inside pens. So sometimes it can stain. We use it in art class, but we usually use it in the form of a pen. We don't use it like a paint until we get a little bit older. The scissors were cutting jokes all night long. They really had the tape rolling. What's one good thing about an artist can't draw? A good wage. Why did the paint come home from work so sad? He was just canned. Why did the large painter go to the paint store? He wanted to get thinner. <laughs> now, scissors, we have to be very safe when we are using our scissors, and we'll go over safety protocol later this year. Things were getting pretty out of control, but the glue held everything together. Hey, buddy. You're cut off. Have you ever used liquid glue before? I like to say dot, dot, not a lot with liquid glue because liquid glue can get messy and sticky really quick. And in a few weeks, we're gonna read a book about Maddie and his icky, sticky, blucky, stucky mess, all about glue boy. Just when I thought it was over, the paints arrived. 
Let's paint the town red. Knock, knock. Who's there? Blue. Blue who? Don't cry. It's only a joke. Ha ha ha. What's wrong with blue? Yeah. So paints exist in a lot of different ways. We have acrylic paint, we have tempera paint. We'll be using a lot of watercolor paint this year and it doesn't come in squeeze tubes like this. Yours will come in a flat pan, but we'll get to use those some too, hopefully. The other brushes loved the idea and jumped right in. I've got a stroke of genius. Let's play with all the colors. Your hair looks great. Look who's showing off. You look good as a redhead. Woohoo! I'm a big fan of art. Have you ever used a brush before? We, we would usually use brushes to paint. And this is showing there's all different kinds of brushes. You have a fan brush that does kind of look like a fan that you might fan yourself with. And then you have thick wide brushes like two inch or three inch brushes that maybe you could think about painting really big areas with. And then you have some of these smaller brushes that come to a nice point so that you could do detail work. It's really important that you use the right brush when you're painting. The palette knife arrived and really mixed things up. Woohoo, spread the word. We won't be using a palette knife, but when you use oil paints or really thick paints, a palette knife is a great way to mix the paints together so that all parts of it get thoroughly mixed and you have one color that you're ready to use. He's surfing. Things were getting pretty crazy. So we all remembered to have lots of water. Art's a splash! You can see that at the end of using the paints that Art remembered that if you leave paints in the paintbrush, your paintbrush isn't gonna fend very well. So you wanna make sure that you rinse them off really good with water and get all of that paint off so you have a nice, happy brush with a fresh set of hair. So, you see, we've been too busy to clean up. Now, if you were in my room, we would obviously clean up after ourselves. So now you have to be the responsible one. And if you're at home and you make a mess in your art space, please make sure that you take good care of your supplies, that you put lids back on everything, and that you clean up your space so it's ready for you to be creative next time. There's nothing worse than coming to a space that is cluttered with mess and you feel like you can't create in it. But we're not too busy to throw another party. Woohoo! Party! Yeah! Stick with it, kid. Oh, yeah! Ta da! Yeah! Ha ha! Woo! Yay! Fun! Love it! Art rules. The end. So I hope you liked this book. If you get on YouTube, you can find someone read it to you again, or you can find it at the public library. It's such a good one. This is my personal copy because I love it so much. Usually we'll do an art lesson, but for this week, your homework is to find a spot in your house where you can be really creative. I know it's not the same as maybe your other academic work. We might make a little bit of a mess when we're creating because Art is messy at times, so please make sure you talk to your parents and you find a space in the house that will work, that you can paint, that you can color, that you can draw, because each week we'll be showing up to do something different. Now you had a school supply list and I hope you were able to get most of the supplies on that list. When I give my art lessons, I'll always do it with a specific supply and then I'll always encourage you to use the supplies you have. So if you don't have a specific supply like I have in my classroom, it's okay to try something else. I'm just really glad that we have an opportunity to make art together. Parents, if you're listening, next week hopefully we'll be linked up with Canvas and there'll be some supplemental activities tied to my art lesson. But for this week, that's a lot to ask of little kiddos to get on a computer and navigate all of that without being taught. So I'd love for their homeroom teacher to teach them just a little bit more about how to navigate Canvas before they're having to find my art. If at any point any of you want to contact me, please, 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 you are more than welcome to. My email is Courtney, 
C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y-S at USD 383. And I will do my very best to respond to you in a timely manner. I am sad that I don't get to see you all on the other side. It's very interesting teaching to a quiet classroom, but my heart is full knowing that on the other end are wonderful children making art and enjoying that artistic process. So with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful first week of school. I miss you so much and I can't wait to hear from you and to teach you more this school year. And I'll look forward to hearing from you soon. Much love.